Hello everybody. I know everybody keeps hearing about like China, what's China doing right now, what's the United States, what we're up to, what Italy's up to, but has anybody ever thought about some of the other countries going on? Like what's going on there? For example, like what's going on right now in Germany? Because they have one of the highest rates right now of coronavirus, but yet one of the lowest rates of mortality. So it's like, hold on. Like the hell? So what's going on with Germany? In addition to that, what's going on with North Korea? Because they're an isolationist country, but at the same time, they have almost no resources for their people. What's going on there? And then let's look into Somalia because they have virtually no government and they're already plagued with so many other diseases and conflicts, viruses. So what's going on over there? That's what this is going to get into today. So here we go. Oh, and also, by the way, all my sources are in the description box below. And if you look into the comment section, I timestamp each topic. So Germany, North Korea, Somalia. I think you guys would appreciate that if you guys want to skip around or whatever. Anyhow, let's get into it. So right now, last I checked, and it's probably going to be over 100,000 cases at this point, but last I checked, right now, it is April 1st, and so there's 935,751 cases globally, 47,241 deaths, and 194,286 recovered. Something that we also know is that the amount of people that are affected is probably roughly 10 times more than the amount that is reported. So there's probably more instead of like 935,000 roughly, it's probably more like 9.3 million people that are affected in this moment. It's probably gonna go to 4 million by the time that this video actually uh, is posted. Full circle, Germany. Now, according to the Times, I'm just going to read you guys what they said, and also again, I have additional sources, but because of the fact that when I was doing my digging, I originally saw uh, the case with Germany through the Times, so out of respect for the Times, I'm going to read what they have to say. So anyway, here's what they say, quote, with more than 63,000 cases of COVID-19, as of March 30th, which is now, by the way, near 80,000 on April 1st, during the time of this recording, Germany is one of the countries worst affected by the pandemic, according to official statistics. But only 560 people known to be suffering from the disease caused by the novel coronavirus have died there, putting Germany's case fatality rate just 0.9%. That gives Germany one of the lowest rates in the world, making it an outlier compared to the places like Italy, where 11% of confirmed patients have died from the disease, and even the US, where the rate is 1.8%. Now we have to ask ourselves, why is Germany doing so much better than all the other countries? Well, there's real, I mean, there's really, there's a lot of factors, but the two main factors is the amount of tests that are available and the amount of intensive care beds that are available. All right, so Germany was actually behind only the UAE, South Korea, and Australia as a country to have administered the most tests in the world per capita. So they have literally administered 160,000 tests in a single week. The reason why that is relevant, obviously, is because of the fact that the more people that you motherfucking test, the more people that know have the motherfucking virus. And so then you can quarantine all those mother, I'm not gonna finish that, but you get the point, right? You can test more people and you can quarantine them, build a little bit more consciousness within the society of who's affected and how do you deal with them. So for perspective, by February, so they've, they've only been doing this by February, by the way, um, in just a few months, Germany has produced tests so effectively that they've distributed 1.4 million tests globally since February. So it's only been a couple months, 1.4 tests globally. I mean, damn, like if that doesn't speak to German efficiency, then I, I don't know what does. <laughs> that's, that's pretty impressive. Meanwhile, in the United States, just until early March, the FDA took so mother long, they weren't even able to start creating tests until recently. Meanwhile, Germany's pumping out 1.4 million tests globally because they're on a mother freaking mission right now to save some lives. So respect to Germany on this one. So in terms of intensive care units, Germany has more than double the amount of beds available for Italy. So Germany has 29.2 intensive care beds per 100,000 people. So 29.2, Italy 12.9 per 100,000 people, right? Well, what's also a little bit more interesting as well is that the United States actually has 
more intensive care beds per 100,000 people than Germany. But at the same time, we also have more people in intensive care units already. And so that's the, the dictating factor. And so we are more likely to get overcrowded, even though we have more beds. I can actually find the exact statistics as to like how much like intensive care units that we have there are, are already completely full. I think that's kind of ever developing similar to the amount of cases that are available. But anyway, so Germany, that is why they're doing good right now. Now, are they out of the dark for this? No, they're just in the beginning stages. And so they're more than likely going to get overcrowded as well, but not at the extent as the rest of us. Now let's go to North Korea. This all begs the question, just how is North Korea doing? According to the New York Times, quote, North Korea has taken some of the most drastic actions against the virus and did so sooner than most other nations. It sealed its borders in late January, shutting off business with neighboring China, which accounts for nine tenths of its external trade. It clamped down on the smugglers who keep its thriving unofficial markets functioning. It quarantined all diplomats in Pyongyang for a month. So that's North Korea. The totalitarian state's singular ability to control the movement of people also bolsters its disease control efforts. However, due to the fact that there has been decades of international sanctions, if there hypothetically was a victim, they have zero ability to be able to handle it because they have no sort of healthcare infrastructure to be able to handle any sort of situation. So I like to compare it as like a house of house of cards, right? It's like, okay, you've stacked yourself into this situation, but I mean, damn, if there's like one little chink in that armor, everything falls down. And so that's if they even get a single victim. Now this is where North Korea would be like, if we get a victim, but, According to Dr. Ki B. Park, a lecturer at Harvard Medical School who was working alongside North Korean doctors to help improve the country's healthcare system. So he essentially said that many observers of North Korea doubt its claim of not having any coronavirus cases, but the lack of testing equipment may mean it literally has not detected a single case. So this goes all the way back into how many cases does North Korea actually have? Well, they claim that they have no cases right now. I call bullshit on that. I mean, you have, I get it, right? It's like they've, they've closed themselves off to an extent, but they still have trades with China, which is dealing with a hell storm of cases. And you have South Korea dealing with a fair amount of cases. So to say they don't have any cases is BS. So it's probably a combination of one, based off of my research, propaganda, go figure. And number two, they simply just don't have the testing ability to be able to find out who has the virus. So for all we know, the whole population could have it and they simply don't know. So full circle, how many cases does North Korea have? Allegedly zero. Okay, sure. Now let's go to Somalia. The Somalia, the most deaths that they have right now is what makes this the most disturbing. Now I predict that Somalia and Liberia are gonna be the worst hit by a long shot. That's my prediction. We'll see if I'm right or not. The amount of cases that they have so far, only five, one recovered. That's scary. The reason why this is disturbing is because this isn't saying that there's no cases in Somalia. What this is saying is that we can't figure out who does and who does not have Corona freaking virus in the country, which is terrifying. And so right now, according to Mohammed Mohammed Ali, the chairman of Somali medical association, this is what this individual has to say. So he's in charge of a lot of the, um, the medical infrastructure right now in Somalia. So this is what he says, quote, currently we don't have a single testing kit in the country. Ooh, we send samples to South Africa and wait for at least three days to know the results. This is a big challenge for us. So that confirms that then that's rough. Now, in terms of raw numbers, nobody actually knows how many cases Somalia actually has, of course. Now I checked with the UN, like what they're doing, and they can't give any sort of raw numbers. The last I checked and international medias, like outlets, they're not able to generate any sort of raw numbers as well. So nobody really knows. Allegedly their first case was March 16th, but there's virtually no way to stop the coronavirus there once it actually starts. And so we have no understanding about how bad it is right now. And there's really nothing to stop it. Now for perspective, before the pandemic, Somalia scored 194 out of 195 countries on the Johns Hopkins Global Health Index. So that means there's only one country that was worse than them. 
My guess is it's probably the Central African Republic that I did videos on prior, by the way, you should check it out. Crazy country, a lot of cool culture and that sort of stuff, but it's insane. Now to add a little bit more dynamic into this, because again, I'm trying to cover some of the stuff that isn't really covered. Let's talk about what some of the extremist organizations are doing in this area. Because, you know, we have a lot of areas across the world where you have these extremist organizations who are literally trying to control territory saying, hey, we can do the job of the government, but we could also do it better. So then my question is, oh, well, if you can do it mother better, then how are you gonna handle a situation like this? Well, that's what I'm about to get into in Somalia because it is mostly an, an, an anarchist, anarchist, did I say that right? Anarchist, yes, state. Now let's focus on uh, Al-Shabaab as well because they're essentially, they're this organization, Islamist extremists, ties to Al-Qaeda, allegedly helped Osama bin Laden during the time of the Afghanistan war with the Soviet Russians. They came a little bit more popular during a time a few years back when Ethiopia was trying to occupy Somalia. And so because of the occupation, Islamist extremists rose to power, which is Al-Shabaab. Now Al-Shabaab claims that the virus was spread, quote, by the crusader forces who have invaded the country and the disbelieving countries that support them. Right now, for perspective, 6.3 million people are on the verge of starving right now. With that said, we have to ask ourselves, what would Al-Shabaab do in these situations to be able to help these people? Because we have to ask ourselves, like, do they have any tests? No, it looks like the country doesn't have any tests. Okay, well, they, can they make sure that the people at least don't starve to death? Well, the only thing that we can really look back into was history. And last we checked, like in 2012, 250,000 people died from starvation, yet Al-Shabaab ensured that no one could accept food supplies from international bodies. So Al-Shabaab's ability to fight starvation, zero. Can they control these areas with the infection? Well, in order to understand that, we have to look at what their priorities are. I would say, personally, quote me if I'm wrong here, but I think one of their priorities is to spread Islamist extremism, so they're probably gonna support the radical mosques in this area. 30 of them closed, they're called madrasas. So can they control the areas well enough to keep their fundamental buildings open? Fundamental buildings, well, literally, because it's fundamental you know, religion, but you get my point. Can they keep them open? No. So their ability to control the government in that area? No, zero. Ability to control starvation? Zero. Can they even control the security situations in these areas either? Let me ask you, what do you think? Do you think they can control the security in these areas? F no, they can't, obviously. They've been at war for a long time now. I only bring things like this up because it, it's, it's just not being talked about. Like <laughs> we talk about like these European countries and then we talk about East Asia and the United States, but like what's going on in Somalia? What's going on in Liberia? What's going on in Central African Republic? What's going on throughout the Middle East? But we don't know, and we never know. And so even though there's not a lot of information on this topic, I find the fact that we don't know to be very important. So even if I have to come out and be like, I don't know guys, we don't really know, the fact that we don't know is important and that is what I wanted to bring to light. Now, am I gonna get a lot of threats because I was covering Al-Shabaab? Sure, but screw it, this is important. I'm just trying to provide a little bit more uh, details about what's going on in areas that we don't normally look at. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for reading this or watching this, I should say. If you guys would like to do any more research, again, I have all my sources in the description box below. But yeah, I mean, if there's any countries that you guys would like me to cover, I mean, definitely let me know. And if you guys want me to dive into the extremists, like terrorist organizations and like, what are they doing? Let me know as well, because that's the core area of my study is literally that. But anyway, hopefully you guys have a safe day, safe quarantine day, a little bit of entertainment, and this video finds you in good conditions. Thank you.